Well, today's the day. Laravel Cloud is available. We can create accounts and we can start shipping our applications. And that idea of shipping is, well, it's what Laravel Cloud was built for. Everything about that service is about shipping applications. So let's take a look. The first thing that we need to do is create a new application. And I'm going to connect to GitHub because I want to grant access to the repository that I want to ship from. Now, of course, if you wanted to grant Laravel Cloud access to all repositories, then go for it. But I'm gonna go with just the one repository I have. This is just a plain Jane Laravel 11 application. There's nothing special about it. I haven't made any changes whatsoever. And of course, there's no customization whatsoever. So we need to select the repository to create our new application. We'll leave the application name alone, and then we can choose the region that we want that application to live. I'm gonna just leave it as Ohio, and we will create that new application. Now, we're going to see this little flow chart that gives us an idea of some of the things that Laravel Cloud is going to give us. If we look at the network, we see that there's DDoS protection, there's a CDN, and there's edge caching. All of that stuff is going to be provided by Cloudflare. But then we can also connect or use a custom domain for our application. We are given one, but you know it's one of those generic things. It ends with uh, cloud or Laravel.cloud, and it's one that we typically wouldn't want to use unless if we need to do some kind of testing. And if we wanted to connect a custom domain, we could if our account would allow us to do so. But then there's the application itself. Now, you know, th there's a couple of things we need to talk about. First of all, we, we've just created an application, but we can also create what are called environments of that application. Like, for example, we have this main environment, which is based upon the main branch on our repository. We can create a new environment if we want to. It can be based upon the main branch, or if we had any other kind of branches, we could select those branches. So we could essentially have multiple environments of the same application running at the same time, which that's kind of cool. But we're not gonna do that. We just want to ship this thing. So let's do that first, and then we can talk about some of the other things. And all I'm going to do is click on this deploy button, and then our application is going to ship. It just takes a few seconds for the build process and then the deploy process to complete. And of course, as that is going on, we can view that process. We can see that it is preparing the build environment, which it just finished, and now it is deploying the application. We'll start with deploying the environment, which it's pending, well, it just finished. Then there's some deploy commands it's going to run, updating the environment stack, and well, now deployment is finished. So we can go and we can view our application by clicking on visit, and voila, there's our application. Now, as I mentioned, this is just a plain Jane Laravel 11 application. There's nothing special. There weren't any databases that I set up. So let's do that. Let's create a database that we want to use with our application. Now you might think, well, I just want to use SQLite and there's some issues with that. We will probably talk about it here in a few moments, but what I want to do is just add a database. So let's add a database and we'll be prompted to create a cluster. Now the cluster name is going to default to the name of the application. And this kind of makes sense because we can create a database cluster for the application and then we can create individual databases for all of the environments for that application, which we only have one environment, which is gonna be called main, but of course we could change that name if we wanted. But this gives us the ability to create a database cluster for a specific application for all of the environments for that application. So let's create this database cluster. And then that in and of itself is going to prompt us to redeploy. Now, every change that we make, we have to save and we get an option. Do we want to save or do we want to save and redeploy? Most of the time we want to save and deploy. So we will make that change and our application will redeploy. 
Now, that might have given you a hint as to why uh, using SQLite could be problematic, because every time that you deploy, that SQLite database is going to go away. It's gone. So if you plan on shipping applications with Laravel Cloud, at least right now, you will want to use, well, I don't want to use the term real database because SQLite is a real database. But you will want to use a real database like Postgres and uh, eventually there will be MySQL available as well. But all we have to do is wait for that deployment to succeed, which it just did. And now our application is using that Postgres database that we just created. We didn't have to change anything about our application because all of the database settings are injected. If we take a look at the settings, let's go to deployments. And if we scroll on down, um, no, this isn't what we wanted to see. But notice that there's a deploy command, and it is to migrate our database. We didn't write that. That was automatically provided by Laravel Cloud. But if we look at the general settings and we scroll on down, we will see the custom environment variables, which has our app key. And if there were any other variables that we needed to specify, this would be the place to put it. But then if we scroll down a little more, we see the injected variables. These are the variables that Laravel Cloud has automatically set up and provided for us. We cannot edit this. We can override these variables in the custom environment variables. And in fact, it will tell us if we are overriding a value. Like if I set app debug to true, we can see that you are overriding one injected variable, which is awesome because I'm one of those people that I would start typing this out and it's telling me, hey, I'm overriding something. So that will make me think twice. But if we take a look at the injected variables, we can see that the database connection information is all right there. We didn't have to add that. Laravel Cloud automatically done that for us, which you know goes back to that whole idea of shipping. Let's make it easy to ship. And there we go. It, it makes it easy to ship. Now, there are other resources that we can provide our application environment. If we scroll over here, we can add a cache, which is compatible with the Redis API. So we can do that as well. We can keep the defaults, create that cache, and it's going to prompt us to save it and deploy. But once that has deployed, we will now have a new, well, it's not a new application. It is the same application just redeployed with the settings using that Redis compatible cache. And we can take a look at the settings and we would see those settings inside of the injected variables. So where we had the database, Variables, if we scroll on down, we can see the cache variables as well. So everything, I sound like a broken record, but everything about Laravel Cloud is about shipping. Shipping your applications and making it as easy as possible to do. Now there's one other resource that we can set up for this environment, and that is a storage bucket. So we can create that bucket. Once again, we can take all of the defaults or we can make whatever change that we need to. We'll create that bucket. And just like everything else, all of the variables needed for our application to use that bucket are going to automatically be injected. There's nothing that we have to do to manually configure all of these things. Laravel Cloud is going to do it for us. So if we take a look at just the application itself, this is going to allow us to set some things about the compute resources such as the CPU and the amount of RAM available. There are many options there. There's also an auto scaling feature, which is really nice. We don't have to worry about scaling. So we can set the custom or the unlimited auto scaling, and it's going to create replicas of our application and automatically balance between those. If we wanted to enable hibernation or set up the scheduler or use Octane as the runtime, all of those are options that we can set for our application environment. But what if we need to make changes to our application after it is deployed? Well, all we have to do is make whatever change that we need. I'm going to log something with the info method. We'll just say info log. We of course need to commit that. So we will add, then git commit. Our message will be logging in welcome. We, of course, want to push that. 
And if we take a look at Laravel Cloud, we can see that our application is redeploying with that update. It just takes a few seconds for that to occur, and then we will be up and running with our updated application. Now, we can also take a look at the logs and... Huh. So I was fully prepared to come in here and not see anything. This is the first time that I've been here and the logs have actually worked. We can see here, there's where I've written to the log. By going to the application and refreshing, we, we should see another entry for the log. Huh. My reaction is just, this is the first time that this has worked. It hasn't worked until now. So I, I'm, I'm excited to see that this was working. I've been told that it worked, but I never saw it work. So great. So the logging works. So you can view your application logs and you can see, well, the, the health of it. That that's That's really nice. Then there's the metrics. This is going to give us you know, a little bit of insight as to how our application is responding. We can see that, you know, good responses, 400 responses, and 500 responses, which we don't have any of those. But we can see the responses that are being returned. We can see the CPU usage as well as the RAM usage. But then there's also the commands. Now, the commands allow us to, well run a command for our environment. And you can see that it prepends the command with PHP artisan, but you don't have to run an artisan command. You can see that I ran a command already that CD'd into database and then ran LS to look at the contents of the database folder. And unfortunately, I really wish that we could click on these entries and it would run that command again. But this is just going to show us a history. So it shows the command that we ran and then the output of that command. So if we wanted to run CD database and LLS again, we would have to type that out, run it, and then see if there were any updates to that directory, which there wasn't. So if there's one thing, well, there's a couple of things, but if there's one thing that I would like to see implemented, it would be the ability to easily rerun a command that I have already ran. Uh, did we look at all of the settings? I don't think we did. Environment name, environment color, or we can set the branch for that environment. We can also control the PHP version and the node version, the HTTP timeout. But really for settings, it really comes down to the custom environment settings that we can set on our own, or we can view the injected variables that are injected by Laravel Cloud. And then if we need to customize any of the deployments, we then can go to the deployment settings. We can add build commands, deploy commands, and there used to be a third thing here, but it looks like that it's just two now, build commands and deploy commands. So that's all well and good. And since there's been changes since I last looked at this, let's go to the environment. I want to see if MySQL is an option here. So if we create a new database, well, I can't do that here. I'll tell you what, we can go back to the organization level and we can take a look at the resources. And here we can see the databases, the caches, and the object storage at the organization level. And we can create a new database cluster. I wanna see if MySQL is available. It is. Awesome, so we have Postgres 17, 16, and now MySQL. So as I mentioned, the whole idea behind Laravel Cloud is to ship, to make it easy to ship your applications. All you have to do is connect a repository, create your databases, your caches, and your storage buckets, and then deploy. It's really just that easy.